you know what? You should get that job that you've been wanting or that raise or that promotion. Why? Because you're amazing. You really are. I mean, you guys should see yourselves. You look so great. I just, oh my gosh, I got to take a picture. This is so good. All right, get your big smiles ready. Ready, big smiles over here. One, two, three. And big smiles over here. One, two, three. Awesome. Thank you. So they told me that I couldn't bring my phone up here. But I'm not the most obedient person like I used to. You see, when I was younger, my parents were prominent members of the community, and it was so important for me to be that well-behaved child, polite, respectful, obedient, and always do what I was told. And that's the way that I could be a good girl. Good girl, Abigail. And then when I grew up and I ended up in the professional world, I wanted to be a good employee. I wanted my boss to say, you know that Abby Hamilton? She's such a good apple. She's polite. She's respectful. She's obedient. She always does what she's told. Well, I wanted that so bad until I realized it wasn't enough. So one day I walked into my boss's office and I handed her this project that I had been working so hard on. And then I backed up and I waited for my good Apple approval. Instead, she said, I wouldn't have done it like this. <laughs> that didn't sound like good Apple to me. Actually, in my head, what I really heard was, you clearly have no idea what you're doing. And almost immediately, the voices from my past chimed in like a choir, telling me that I don't know what I'm doing. And it sounded like, ooh, what are you wearing? That doesn't even go. And this coffee tastes like tar. You can't even make coffee. And you need to take some parenting lessons, Abby. The sad thing is, in that moment, I agreed with them that I can't do anything right. And I told my boss, you're the boss. I'll do whatever you say. So I went back into my office, and I tried to make the changes that she suggested. And even one change would ruin other parts of the project. I couldn't do it. I couldn't make those changes. I needed to go tell her. So I collected all the courage I had from deep down inside. My heart was beating so fast. And I walked into her office, and I said, these are the reasons we need to keep it this way. And she said, OK. Whew! That was such a huge moment in my life. I was strong. I was assertive. I spoke up like a person who makes decisions, a smart person who makes good decisions. And I spoke up. And I found out later that she was back in her office when I left it, smiling and saying to herself, now that is the Abby I have been waiting for. Isn't it crazy how she knew I had it in me, but I didn't. I was still listening to those negative voices. And I, in this moment, got to feel what it was like to be strong and smart and assertive. And I wanted more. I loved that feeling. So I went to that sacred place that all people go to learn those things that they want to know. YouTube. <laughs> and there... I watched every single video there was on assertiveness. And I learned that there's this thing called negativity bias, where your brain, because it's trying to protect you, concentrates more on the negative. And it doesn't concentrate as much on the positive. 
No wonder I was hearing those negative voices from my past so much. And then in my doctorate program, I learned about this concept called Bandura's Social Cognitive Theory, where basically our influences from our environment from when we grew up all the way up until now, they shape the way we assess what we can and what we can't do. That means everybody here, each of you has your own little bank of influences that explain who you are. Maybe for some of you, you had a conservative parent, you had conservative parents, or maybe you grew up in a small town, or maybe you grew up in a completely different culture. As for me, it was my Filipino culture. I'm a second generation Filipino American. And in our culture, we focus on respect, obedience, humility. We avoid confrontation, and we never question our authority. No wonder I had so much trouble speaking up. But I wondered, was it my culture that was keeping me from speaking up? So I conducted a study on 473 Filipino Americans, and I did find out that the stronger we hold on to our Filipino interpersonal norms, the less assertive we are. So what do I do with that? I mean, I'm trying to make it in this society where the forceful, direct, push the envelope people are getting the attention. They're getting that raise. They're getting the promotion. But I'm just not like that. I didn't want to be forceful and pushy and mean and rude and ugly. But I learned that you don't have to be. Actually, assertiveness is communication that is firm, but it's also respectful. And when it's done right, it is beautiful. And that is why now I speak to women and minorities, and I speak to colleges and companies to tell them how to assert themselves in a way that is beautiful. And today I'm going to tell you the three keys to practicing beautiful assertiveness. Number one, know your value. Aristotle said, know thyself. Know myself? Who am I? What am I? I didn't know. I needed an answer. And then I found it in that movie, The Help. You seen that movie? Where Miss Abilene said to that little girl that she was smart and she is kind and she is important. That's me. That's me. And that's you. That's us every single day. We are smart and kind and important. One day I was at work and I walked into my boss's office and I had a normal everyday question for him, but it must have been the worst possible moment because he said, come on in, have a seat. What do you think this is? Abby Hamilton Company? And he began his angry monologue. And I was a wreck. I allowed his words to shred me into pieces and I let it hurt me deep inside. Now, if I had remembered Miss Abilene's words that I am smart and important, I would have been able to say, you know what? I woke up this morning and came out into this world to be a good person. And I came to work today to be a good employee. And I would have the strength and the confidence to say to my boss, I want to do an amazing job in this position. Show me how. Tell me how. We need to be able to know our value and hold on to it tightly so that no one can swipe it away from us with their angry monologues. Sun Tzu, the author of The Art of War, said, know yourself and you win all the battles. 
Isn't that beautiful? Number two, show and share your greatness. Back when I was a teacher, I had been at this school for a few years, and this one day this sparkly brand new teacher started. And every single day, I would see her in the principal's office, and they were just chatting away, and I always wondered, what is it that they have to talk about every single day? And then I found out, all the teachers got that email that said, teachers, I want you to start doing this great new thing that the new teacher has shared with us. And I was like, what? I've been doing that for years. My mistake was, I never told my boss. How on earth was she supposed to know all the great and wonderful things that were happening in my classroom if I didn't tell her? When we show and share our greatness and our ideas and our achievements with other people, not only will we make it so clear to our boss that we are that person who deserves that raise and that promotion, we also get the opportunity to show and share our greatness and our ideas with others and begin to be an inspiration to them. Now that's beautiful. Number three, glow like you're the best. When I say glow, I mean like you can feel your greatness from deep down inside and it comes out so that the world can see it. It shines from you. One day, I was online, and I saw this awesome, amazing picture of Jennifer Lopez. And she had her arms up in the air like she was saying, here I am, world. I am the best. Ooh, I love that. I want to be like Jennifer Lopez. I wanted to be like that. So I tried it. I put my arms up, and I said, I am the I couldn't do it. I couldn't. It's just not me, not my personality. I just didn't want to be so showy. But then I realized, if I can't say I'm the best, why is anybody else in this world going to think that? It's like this. If I tried some lemonade and I was like, hmm, it's not the best. Here, try it. Would you try it? What if I said, ooh, I got a guy for you to introduce to your daughter. He's not the best. Or, oh, that doctor, this doctor, she could do your surgery. She's not the best. Or here's a daycare for your kids. It's not the best. Would you say, whoo, sign me up? Of course not. You want the best. So we need to be able to glow like we're the best so that our future employer would think that. Or even our potential spouse could think that. What about your next big client? Can they see how you glow like you're the best? Well, now that I know how to practice beautiful assertiveness by knowing my value, showing and sharing my greatness, and glowing like I'm the best, I can go back to those voices from my past and I could say to them, I am smart enough to recognize that you, you have your own style. And I have my style too. And my style says that it's perfectly fine. Actually, not, not just perfectly fine. It's awesome that I'm wearing these polka dot shoes on this stage for the entire world to see. And you know why? Because guess what? My ideas are important too. I am the best. I am the best at being me. And now I encourage you all to know your value. Show and share your greatness. Glow like you're the best and spread this beauty in the world. Every single morning when you wake up, you have a brand new opportunity to change your life by showing the world the beautiful, assertive you. Thank you.